Hi everyone, Becky here from Notes from the Sewing Room. Thank you for joining me today. In today's video, I'm gonna be telling you all about my plans to make a autumn winter capsule wardrobe. So that's basically a number of different bit, bits of clothing that all work together um, in terms of the colors and the styles and that kind of thing. So I've got a range of different fabrics here, <laughs> which I'm gonna be talking through in terms of um, the patterns that I'm gonna make, the sewing patterns that I'm gonna make, and also the fabrics that I'm gonna use and kind of what my thinking is so far. I'd also like a little bit of help from you in terms of deciding on a couple of bits as well. So um, if that sounds interesting, please do stay tuned and watch the rest of my video. If you are new to my channel, my channel is all about sewing, it's all about upcycling, sewing patterns, kind of just generally being creative. So if that is something that does um, interest you, then please do press that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, thanks to all of you who do come back um, each week and watch my videos I really do appreciate it. I do try and upload a video once each week either um, on a Friday or a Tuesday I do try and go for Fridays at the moment um, but obviously it's kind of life dependent <laughs> um, but yes let's get started. So as you'll know if you've watched any of my other videos before I do quite like to use up kind of bits of fabric that I've got in my stash rather than things going to waste. So I was having a look through what I'd actually got and I've got these um, a range of kind of sweatshirt jerseys um, that are all orange, um, this kind of lovely burnt orange colour, um, but they're all slightly different. And I just thought, how could I put these together to make something? And then I thought, aha, I know I can have a go at making a little blazer. Um, so um, I had a look through online, spent ages on the fold line website, looking through all the patterns, did some Googling and that kind of thing. And then uh, one of my lovely sewing friends said, ah, oh, what about the Metro blazer by Love Notions? And I went, ooh. I've not heard of that. So that's what I'm planning on making. But let me tell you first about the fabric. So I've got this one, which was left over from a jumper project, I think that I did for Williams. That's got a bit of a um, kind of square design on it, kind of printed into the fabric. Then I've got this one, uh, which is just an off cut, which I just bought, I think from a remnants basket, which is that kind of an animal print. Um, I've got this orange one, which again is just a plain sweatshirt one that was left over from a jumper that I made for my husband and some trousers that I made for my little boy William. And I'm not sure where this one's come from, to be honest. Um, it's a slightly different colourway to that one. Um, but again, it's a kind of sweatshirty type fabric, which I've had for a while. So I think all of those do work quite nicely together. <laughs> and it's a bit crumpled. Um, so I just thought, why not have a go at making this Metra blazer? So if you are unfamiliar with it, like I was, I'll just tell you a little bit about it. So it's available in sizes extra small through to 5x. It's got two different collar options. It's got a shawl option and a wide lapel option. It's meant for more stable knits, so hopefully these sweatshirt jerseys would probably work okay. Um, and there's no, it says no trim plate pages plus layers. So I don't know. I've had this printed anyway. Um, I've had it printed on like AO paper, so hopefully that's going to be okay. Um, but I'm not sure uh, which version to have a go at. I think I might have a go at doing this one with the kind of shawl collar. I think that looks quite nice. Um, but it's been the first time that I've ever used a love notions um sewing pattern actually um so that's going to be um all new to me um but that's another little picture of what it looks like if you can see that so but if you have had a go at making this before i would love to know how you got on with the sizing what it came up like in terms of length and that kind of thing um but i think basically it says here it's a, a simple blazer meant for stable knits like i said um included in the pattern are two collar options and it says no garment is complete without pockets, which I think you'd probably agree. Um, and this uh, blazer is no exception. It has inseam welt style pocket designs, which are simple to construct. Well, we'll see when I'm making it <laughs> and see how simple I actually find it, because I've not actually done that before. Uh, but it says it's got a high end look. So it certainly looks really smart. So um, I definitely want to have a go at doing that one. So that is on my list. And I think that's going to be perfect for this time of year. It's going to keep me nice and cozy, nice and warm. So um, yes, that will be lovely. So that is the first one. Um, by the way, if you are interested in what I'm wearing today, I do have a ready to wear cardigan on. And then if I just slip this down, 
um, you'll see that I've got a little McCall's dress on, uh, which I made ages ago, which has got a bit of elasticy detail around here. I quite like this kind of square neckline. I can't really remember uh, what the number of the pattern was. Um, I think if you were to scroll back on my Instagram page from about a year ago, you'd probably find it. Um, but it's got these quite cool, like little orangey buttons on there as well. It's more of a summery dress, I'll be honest. But because I'm pregnant at the moment, I'm trying to sort of wear things that are loose and flowy. <laughs> so at the moment, this is still kind of working for me and it's not too cold at the minute to get away without tights. So that's what I'm doing until I can avoid, <laughs> until I can't avoid actually putting them on. Um, I have bought myself a couple of pairs of maternity tights. I've already got some maternity leggings. So um, yeah, we'll see, but I'm quite enjoying like not wearing any tights or leggings at the minute for as long as I possibly can. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about my next project. So that's the first one. Um, next one, I actually wanted to ask your opinion on. So I've got this pattern, which is the Friday Pattern Company Davenport dress. Now I've not actually made this before, um, but I really want to. And it's been kind of on my kind of mental sewing list for absolutely ages. Um, it's meant for woven fabrics. It's available in sizes extra small, three to seven X. Um, I just like all the little details on it. Um, there's some little frill details just around the um, upper arms here. If I think that's optional if you want to put that in. You've got this three quarter length arm detail, which has got a nice kind of detail just um, around the elbow area there. It's got a two tier skirt, which I think is quite cute. And then it's also got a kind of tie belt so i think the belt is kind of uh, fed through um the dress in a sort of channel so it's a drawstring but my question to you is do you think that i am going to have enough wiggle room in this being pregnant at the moment so i'm keen to actually make things for myself that i can wear now but i can also wear after my pregnancy just so that i get kind of maximum wear out of everything that I'm making. So I don't really know if this is gonna work for me at the moment or not, to be honest, uh, but I'm keen to give it a go and see. Um, but if you've made it, I'd love to know how you found the sizing, if you did have plenty of room in there, um, you know, what size you'd usually make, um, how you found it coming up on the sizing in this pattern, et cetera. Um, that would be really, really helpful. Um, so in terms of the, the fabric that I was thinking of, I was talking to a friend about it and originally I was gonna go for a cotton lawn. And then she said, actually, I think it would work better in a viscose. So I was having a look through um, fabrics that I'd got and I came across this one and I actually thought it's got quite an autumnal vibe even though it is a viscose fabric so I got this from um, a So Hayley Jane box quite a while ago now but it's got a beautiful drape to it um, but I've only got two and a half meters so I'm hoping that that might actually be enough for this dress but I'm not 100% sure because I think I don't know, off the top of my head, I think it suggested that you might need three metres, so I might be half a metre short, but maybe I could do something, I don't know, change the length of the skirt, change the length of the arms, I don't know, I can probably just wangle it somehow so that actually it, it works okay. Um, but I did think that the jacket I was talking about and this fabric would go really, really well together as part of my little capsule wardrobe. So um, if you could let me know in the comments below what you think about making the Davenport dress, um, that would be lovely. Uh, but that's another plan that I have there. I'm hoping to get all this sewn up over the next couple of months probably. Um, I don't want to put any pressure on myself but um, yeah sometime over the next couple of months I'm thinking. So the next thing that I'm thinking about is actually making a kind of staple piece for my wardrobe that will go with lots of tops and cardigans and blazers and all that kind of thing. So um, a little while ago I picked this plain denim fabric up from my local market um, and um, it's a really nice fabric because it's got a nice bit of stretch to it but it's actually a woven fabric uh, but I do quite like a denim that's got a little bit of stretch to it I do find that it just gives me that a little bit of ease a little bit more comfort when I'm wearing it I don't tend to like denims that are too stiff uh, because I do I do find them just a little bit uncomfortable when, when I'm actually wearing them um, so this this one is really nice because it's not actually too heavyweight either it's quite um, it's quite a lightweight fabric to be honest uh, and it was an absolute bargain because I got it from my local market as well, which is nice. Um, so I've actually got quite a lot of that fabric there. Um, I can't actually remember how much I've got. I've got at least two and a half metres, um, if not a little bit more there. Um, so I don't know whether to make this into a skirt, 
And if I do, I was thinking of the Sew Over It Ruby skirt. That's a little picture of what the Sew Over It Ruby skirt looks like if you've not actually seen it before. Um, so it's actually got a flat waistband at the front. It's got elastic at the back. It's got a button down front. You've got optional pockets that you can put on the front if you want to. I actually left those off the couple of times that I've made this skirt already. Um, and it's got a, a slight bit of gathering to the front of the skirt. Now, I've made this two times, like I said, I've made it once in a cotton poplin and I've made it once in a cotton lawn fabric. My favorite is probably the lightweight cotton lawn fabric. Um, I don't think the, there's anything wrong with the, the, with the poplin version. I, I do quite like it, but I think it's just perhaps a little bit tight for me at the moment. And that's probably why I'm um, not so keen on it. Um, I kind of changed the size in the second time that I made it. The, the first time I made it, I made it in a UK uh, size 12. And um, I thought, oh, it's a little bit loose around the waist. So I actually um, reduced the um, the measurements a little bit around the waist for the second time that I made it and kind of made it almost in like, a size 10, UK size 10, and a little bit, <laughs> if that makes sense. But I think I probably overdid it and um, just kind of made it a little bit um, too small, unfortunately. Um, so I'll keep that in mind for this time if I do have a go at actually making that skirt. Um, if I do have a go at doing that, because it's quite a plain fabric, I thought I'd go for some fun buttons down the front, maybe something sparkly or something with maybe an autumnal colour to it, um, maybe like an orange button or... I don't know really, just something that looks quite fun. And um, another option would potentially be to use this for another little jacket, because I did actually make a denim jacket earlier in the summer. I made a kind of lilac version or so over it Sorrento jacket, uh, which I really like and I've been wearing at any opportunity that I've had. Um, it goes with lots of stuff actually. I'm really pleased with that one. Um, but I know it's coming to that time of year where I probably won't really wear a lightweight jacket too much, um, but I suppose I could always layer it up under another bigger coat potentially so I don't know let me know what you think shall I use this for a skirt or shall I use it for a little jacket possibly a skirt not sure but do let me know what you think anyway um so that's that one I have actually been looking for an alternative skirt that I could make that's got maybe elastic at the back and a flat waistband at the front that's maybe slightly different to the ruby skirt design maybe something with different pockets or something that has got a bit of a different look about it, but I've really not been able to find anything. I've had a look online um, quite a few times and um, I've just not really found anything that I, you know, really jumped out of me that I really wanted to get, which is a, which is a bit of a shame, but I'll, um, I'll, keep a, I'll keep an eye out anyway. And to be honest, it's probably better that I use things that I've already got in my stash. If you haven't made the ruby skirt before, by the way, it is a free pattern from the Sew Over It website. Um, all you have to do is download it. And then of course you can print it off at home or you could send it off for printing on AO paper, AO paper if you wanted to. Um, so that's up to you. Um, but yes, that's that one. So that's three projects um, into my capsule wardrobe here. Now, the um, next one that I wanted to talk to you about is this lovely cotton lawn fabric that I've got here. So I think that has got a lovely um, autumnal vibe to it because it's got this kind of burnt orange background. It's got these white bits on uh, with those other splodgy bits in black and brown. Um, so I think this is really nice. Um, I've got at least a couple of metres of this. Again, I've had this in my stash for ages. I'm not sure if it's a Lady McElroy fabric. It might actually be. I think I bought this from Crafty So-and-So um, quite a while ago and um, not really sure what I was going to do with it, possibly a dress, etc. Uh, but now I've been thinking about it and I thought, aha, I know I'm going to have a go at making a sew over it Alex shirt dress. So I will put in a picture of what the Alex shirt dress actually looks like. Uh, but I've made a couple of versions of the Alex shirt dress before and it's a really really nice one um it's got an up and down type hem at the bottom of it if you want to do that i've actually straightened out the hem at the bottom when i've made uh, my other versions previously i've made it in a uk size 10 but i found that for me personally it's had enough um kind of room in there um i think i did probably reduce the seam allowance a little bit so that it was a little bit um smaller on this on the on the seam allowance so i've got a little bit more room in the dress um but i found that during my pregnancy my alex shirt dresses have actually been really good and they're also really good for wearing afterwards as well i always make a little tie belt to go around the middle um but 
you know, you, you could wear a different kind of belt if, if you preferred. Um, but I think that that's going to work really nicely. It will look nice, hopefully, with some nice thick black tights or brown tights as well. And um, a little jacket of some sort. Um, unfortunately, I don't think it will go with my orange blazer because it probably be too much orange. Um, but that's why if I was to turn that into a little jacket, that could potentially work. Um, but that's where I need your help <laughs> to let me know. Um, but yes, I'm thinking of an Alex shirt dress for that one because I just think it's going to be uber practical. I can wear it for work. I can wear it at home. It would just be one of those dresses that I'm always going to reach for, you know, in my, in my wardrobe, which are always nice ones to go for. So um, yes, that's that one. Again, if you've had to go at making the Alex shirt dress, you can actually do it as a shirt as well. You don't have to do it as a dress. Um, but I'd love to know, you know, if you made any adaptations at all, if you changed it up, what kind of fabric you use, that kind of thing. I'm always interested to hear kind of other ideas, but generally I think when I've made it, I made one version in a cotton lawn, which worked really well. So hopefully that will be the same. And I made one version in more of a, a viscose type woven fabric, uh, which was also quite nice. But I think I probably out for two prefer my lawn version just because it's got a little bit more structure to it. Um, so yes, that will hopefully be quite good. So the next one that I wanted to talk to you about is a fabric that I've got here, which is a jersey fabric, but I've only got about a metre of this. So that is that fabric there. So it's really nice. It's got, you probably can't see it on the camera very well, but it's almost got like a little bit of sparkle in those flowers there, um, which is quite cute. Again, I think I picked this up from Crafty So-and-So um, quite a while ago um, with the view to doing a little t-shirt of some sort and I've just never really got round to it. So as I said, I've not got loads of fabric in terms of that one. Um, so one, one um, project that I'd really like to make is the Bridget T by Pattern Scout. So that's it there. So I bought this pattern um, a little while ago. As you can see, it's got a square neckline. Um, you could do it with a short sleeve or a longer sleeve if you want to. And then I think it's finished with a kind of facing on the inside. So I've not actually had a go at making this yet. I wanted to have a go at making it a while ago and I've not really got around to it. Um, but I'm not really sure if at the moment this is going to work for me kind of size wise. Because um, when I've cut out the pattern and um, like a said I kind of cut it out a while ago and I've just not really done anything with it. Um, it doesn't look like it's got loads of room in it. So I'm not sure. Um, alternatively, I could have a go at making, I know it's quite an old pattern, but one that I really like, which is the Coco pattern by Tilly and the Buttons. I'm still wearing some of my Coco um, tops that I've made ages ago. Um, but even though I've got a pregnancy bump, I'm just kind of like Utching them up a little bit. Um, so they're still quite comfortable to be honest. So I could have a go at doing that. I know that there's the Tilly and the Buttons Agnes top as well, which Tilly released as um, a pregnancy version. So I could ha have a go at doing that one potentially, but I'd probably rather have a go at doing something that I've already got printed off or, you know, in my stash as a paper pattern already. So yeah, bit of a mystery this one, uh, but I would quite like to have a go at doing something with it. And whether I use this as a skirt or a jacket, that would work really nicely together, of course, uh, which will work perfectly as part of my little capsule wardrobe that I'm doing here. Um, I did have another thought as well. The Friday Pattern Company Donny shirt is actually supposed to be made in a woven fabric. That's the Donny's shirt there, if you're unfamiliar with it. So it's a little kind of boxy shirt that's got a little collar, um, and it's got some nice uh, detailing at the back there as well, which is quite nice. Um, that's another little pattern drawing of, of what it looks like. So I don't know if I'd have enough fabric for this. And also, I don't know if my jersey fabric would work for this. So if you have made the Donny, I'd love to know what you think. Do you think it might work in a jersey? Or do you think I'm just kind of uh, wasting my time <laughs> kind of having a go at doing it in a jersey? Um, I'm not really sure. But um, yeah, let me know your thoughts anyway on, on this jersey fabric and um, I shall take it from there and decide what I'm actually going to do with it. So finally, the final pattern and fabric that I wanted to talk to you about today is another jersey fabric. So this is a kind of quilted sweatshirt type fabric. Um, which I've just picked up recently from Higgs and Higgs. Um, they've actually got quite a nice range online of um, quilted jersey type fabrics and sweatshirt fabrics and that kind of thing. And I saw this come up in an email actually, and I just thought, oh, that looks interesting. So um, I've um, 
ended up getting some. So it wasn't um, the cheapest fabric in the world, but it is quite nice. I just love that colour. Um, it's probably one of my favourite colourways, actually, that. So I think it's going to work quite nicely with a lot of these things. If that's a t-shirt, that's going to work quite nicely. If that's a skirt or a jacket, that's going to work quite nicely with that. Um, I think also it might even go with these orange things um, that I was talking to you about. So um, hopefully this will work quite nicely for whatever it's turned into. Now, absolutely ages ago, I uh, made a cardigan from uh, Crafty So-and-So, which I believe um, was available as a little course. Um, I'll put a picture in anyway of um, and the details down below of all these patterns that I'm talking about. Um, but it's a really nice kind of long line cardigan um, that's got turned up cuffs. I think it's called the Cozy Cardigan. And um, it's just got a kind of simple collar detail all the way around. Um, and you literally just turn it up at the bottom and top stitch it so there's no hemband from memory. Um, but I've had a go at doing that a couple of times and because it's a long line cardigan with long sleeves and you've got a bit of a turn up on the sleeves if you if you want to do that, it's actually a really, really nice cardigan to make for the winter time. Nice and snuggly, it can be put on, on top of uh, lots of other um, garments, dresses, skirts, tops, wear it with jeans, whatever. So um, it's a really like nice kind of go-to one. I've already got it printed off because I've done it before. So I'm thinking that might be quite a good one to go to. Um, alternatively, I was thinking of the Tilling the Buttons Bertha cardigan because um, I have had a go at doing that before. I think that might be from the Stretch book or from the Make It Simple book. Can't remember quite off the top of my head, but it's one of those ones. Um, but yeah, I like the I like the birth cardigan too. I've made that um, a few times, so I would recommend that as a cardigan choice if you were looking for a cardigan for this time of year to make. Um, but yes, this is this is a lovely fabric. It's got a bit of stretch to it, not loads, but a bit. But I think that's just going to make it nice and comfortable to wear. So that's it. That's all my fabrics that I wanted to share with you today and patterns that I wanted to chat about. So I hope you've enjoyed hearing about my autumn winter capsule wardrobe plans. Um, I'd love to know what you're working on at the moment. So don't forget to let me know down in the comment section. And of course, I will get back to you as quickly as I can. Um, but until next time, I'll leave it there. Don't forget myself and Karen from So Little Time are running um, a lovely, well, we think it's lovely, <laughs> Um, Instagram sewing challenge during the month of October 2023 um, and we love it if uh, you could get involved it's open worldwide so ev everyone has a chance to get involved if they want to and it's all about upcycling so you can upcycle a garment for yourself or for someone else or you could upcycle some materials you've got at home into a bag so you could literally use anything you could use a garment that you've made before it doesn't really work out. it's not really worked out you could use something that's ready to wear you could use a tablecloth you could use some old curtains basically anything kind of goes um but all the all the um details are in my previous video uh, which i will link in this video if you um want to check it out and have a look it's running from the 1st of october through to the 31st of october uh, with the 31st of october being the reveal date on instagram um, and we've got lots of fantastic sponsors lots of great prizes um, and we just really hope that you would love to get involved uh, we had quite a few people get involved last year and we had quite a lot of good feedback so yes we're hoping for a similar response this year so if you would like to get involved that would be amazing um, and uh, do let me know also if you are planning on it and what you're planning on making but until next time i'll leave it there thanks so much for joining me today and i'll see you again really soon Bye.